It's bizarre. People turn into slugs, but I kind of like it. I'm just not going to show you guys that stuff. Also, I hope this doesn't look weird. I'm plunging my coffee. I don't know why I just petted it. That was weird. And I ended up destroying it. <laughs> Happy day one of Spookathon. Did I I am here making some coffee to get my day started. Look at this cute mug. <laughs> I'm obsessed with him. He's a little ghost with glasses. I'm so excited. I love this readathon so much. It's my favorite one every year. The Spookathon was one of the first readathons I ever did. So I'm very excited to participate again this year. I have some fun things planned, which I will talk about a little bit later when I'm more human. But right now I'm gonna make my coffee and get my day started, start some work. And I'll check in with you guys probably around lunchtime with what I wanna read and what I plan to do this week. Hello, I'm back. It is my lunch break. I just wanted to jump on here really quick and chat about the books that I plan on reading this week and the books that you'll see in this vlog. Basically there are five prompts for this readathon. The first prompt is to read a thriller and for that one I am gonna go ahead and read The Whisper Man. I am buddy reading this with my friends Liv and Kaylin, who I love so, so much. And yeah, we're reading this this month together. I'm excited. I don't know a lot about this. He's a serial killer that whispers outside people's windows and lures them outside. My friend Kaylin already read it and she said that it reminded her of Silence of the Lambs so I'm pretty excited about that. The next prompt is read a book with red on the cover and for that one I picked An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen and I'm really really excited about this one. I've heard nothing but good things. Lala is also reading this one right now so I'm excited to hear what she has to think about it. The next prompt is a book with a spooky setting and for that one I picked The Grip of It. This is by Jack Jimmick and I'm really excited for this one. It's been on my TBR shelf for a while. It takes place in a scary haunted mansion, so it sounds pretty fun. Another prompt is to read a book with a spooky word on the title, and for this one I picked In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And then the last prompt is to read a book that is outside of your comfort zone, and for that I am reading Uzumaki by Junji Ito. This is a horror manga, and it's giant. <laughs> it's so big. So that should be interesting. Hopefully I can get through it, but I am very excited to get to that one as well. So to make this vlog slightly interesting and <laughs> not just me reading a bunch of books, Andrew is gone this week, so I don't have a lot of things to do. I just, I don't have anyone to hang out with. So I made a list of fall activities that I want to do this week as well. One of those is to carve a pumpkin. I really want to do that. I haven't carved a pumpkin in a long time, so that should be interesting. I want to bake pumpkin bread, which is another thing I actually have never done, but I just have a simple box mix, so it shouldn't be too hard, but I am looking forward to eating it. I also want to color a picture. I have been really into coloring and listening to audiobooks lately. It's been so really relaxing and like literally all I want to do so I will be doing that. I have a really cool picture in mind from a book I just got that I'm excited to color. I also really want to watch a Halloween-y movie. I can't decide if I want to do like a scary movie or just like Halloween Town or Hocus Pocus because I haven't watched any of those yet either this month. So I'm gonna kind of wait and see what I'm in the mood for. Another thing I really want to do is make squash soup. It's like my favorite meal during the fall. And another one I have is to go fall home decor shopping. I budgeted a little bit for myself to go out and pick up a few cute things. So I thought I would just take you guys along with me. We'll probably do that also on Saturday during a weekend when I have more time and I'm not working. So far today I have listened to a little bit of An Anonymous Girl, but that is it. I definitely will be focusing more on reading after work. I'll check in with you guys a little bit later when I've actually done some reading. I love the way she moves, yeah. When she's watering our garden with the headphones Singing off key Ariana through the window And I can't help but hum along Could stay in on a Saturday night We don't gotta go out just to have a good time All you need is take out in a bottle of wine We don't need that much to have the time of our lives You and me and 20 bucks You and me and that's enough We don't need that fancy stuff Oh, yeah. We got no worries, worries, worries oh, yeah. We got no worries, worries 
worries, worries, worries Worries I love the way she looks, yeah When she's curled up on the sofa on the landline Talking to a it's sister The moment of truth kind of hard on the outside. <laughs> I might have ordered it yet. It's okay. It's pretty good actually. Overbaked the edges a little bit, but it's really good. And it's totally putting me in a fall mood. It smells so good in my house right now. <laughs> like, so good. I am probably about halfway through this book now which is crazy. I have been listening to the audiobook as much as I possibly can and it's getting more interesting. It's really hard to talk about this book without giving things away. They purposefully set it up very ominous. You start to find out things early on, but it's good really to go into this one not knowing a whole lot. It's a domestic adult mystery thriller about this girl who ends up getting paid to take this survey for this study. She ends up answering a lot of very like personal morality questions. We find out who is putting on this survey. We find out a little bit more about our main character, Jessica. And that is all I can say about this book because you should really go into it blind. I'm not loving it, but I'm not hating it quite yet. I did it. Oh, I finished it. I can't believe I read this whole book in a day. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna go to sleep tonight hearing that voice actor in my head. <laughs> I feel like I have to give it a little bit of time to think about it. Definitely like classic domestic thriller. I liked it a lot actually, like the more I think about it. With domestic thrillers, I tend to get very like confused because there's just so many red herrings and the author really tries to just throw you off and that definitely happened in this one but it was more of like a back and forth I was like no he did it no she did it I kept switching what I thought was gonna be the outcome maybe the back and forth happened too much but overall I don't know I kind of liked it it was enjoyable not the most mind-blowing thriller I've ever read I just have a feeling that I'm gonna forget kind of what it was about but I did enjoy it, so I'm glad that I read it. I'm glad that I finished this whole beast in a day. Go me. I'm exhausted. It's 12.24, so I'm gonna hit the hay, and I will check in tomorrow for day two. I don't know what I'm gonna read tomorrow. We'll just have to wait and see. Good morning, happy day two of Spookasan. I need to pick my second book. What am I going to read? I think I'm gonna start The Whisper Man tomorrow. Liv and I were talking and we want to start it tomorrow I think. So today I don't think I'm gonna do an audiobook. I think I'm going to start The Grip of It by Jack Jimmick. This is the one that takes place in like a haunted house and it's 270-ish pages so I should be able to get through at least half of this today. I don't have a lot of stuff on my plate. Obviously I have work. I want to work out. I think I'm gonna make that soup today. The butternut squash soup. I'm very excited about that. I got like the biggest butternut squash ever though. It's so big. It's like over six pounds. So I need to figure out how to properly roast that sucker. All I have to say, I'm super excited to start this one. I probably will start it on my lunch break and I will check in when I have more thoughts on it. Haunted house book. I don't think I've ever read a haunted house book. So I am ready to go. Y'all, I have read 10 pages today. <laughs> oh no! Today is literally the opposite of yesterday. I have got nothing accomplished as far as reading goes. I read 10 pages of the grip of it so far. Work is done now. It is five o'clock and I need to <laughs> cook the biggest butternut squash I could find at the store. This is literally the size of a small child. I don't know why I just petted it. That was weird. I I feel like this might be a fail. I also feel like this might take me all night to make. <laughs> I'm just gonna get started and hopefully I can get this thing in the oven and cooking and eat butternut squash soup at some point tonight. <laughs>
I just made so many dishes for myself. <laughs> Seriously. So I keep trying to show y'all my dinner, but my mental health <laughs> just took a spin out of control for whatever fun reason. And yeah, I don't know. I am feeling really weird this evening. I don't want to be that girl that like cries on every vlog. And I don't want to be that girl that talks about her struggles on every vlog. But it's like I can't separate my real life from what I'm showing y'all and uh, I don't know what happened. I worked out while I was making dinner. I started watching some people's daily vlogs and they were so good and inspiring. And then I started second guessing not doing daily vlogs and then putting myself down for it. And then I said, well, I'll work out and that'll make me feel better. And I worked out and it didn't make me feel better. And then I was like, okay, I'll just stop everything that I'm doing tonight and I will just stay up all night and I will get a vlog posted so I can do daily vlogs. And I started editing my vlog and I just hated the way I looked on camera and it's like I can't edit a stupid vlog without combusting and it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating that I just can't get through it. Um, so I'm not daily vlogging. Again, I don't know why I have been so indecisive about daily vlogging, not daily vlogging. What do I do? Oh my gosh, I put all this pressure on myself and it's so unnecessary. And so I'm trying to just not turn something that's making me feel a certain way into negativity about myself because that's my very first instinct to do whenever I feel something, whether it's anger or frustration or stress, I always internalize it and I channel it into negativity into myself. And I need to start realizing that that's happening and acknowledge it and stop it before it gets out of control. But yeah, it's just been like a really weird, difficult night. So it feels good to vent that out. I'm really not trying to be the girl that's always crying and talking about mental health, but this is my real life and it's happening and now it's in the video. So there we go. Let's get that out of the way and continue on with my night. We're just gonna go forward from here. Dinner got finished. It's almost eight o'clock and I'm very excited for it. I made some Brussels sprouts which I love when they're like roasted and everything. They look delicious. And then I have the soup going in the crock pot and it's so good, y'all. It turned out so good. And I will link the recipe down below if you wanna try it. It's so good. So I'm very excited about that. I have not read a single thing other than about like 10 pages this morning. So I need to eat some dinner. I think I'm then gonna run a bath and try and just calm down and relax and move on from this weird evening. pages in to the grip of it and I'm kind of bored which is sad this book is basically a haunted house story we're following a husband and a wife he and his wife decide to leave the city and they move to this small town in Wisconsin they both find new jobs and they move into this creepy house that they got for a good deal. A lot of weird things start happening in the house. There's like secret passageways. They find like a random grave in the yard. They have a weird neighbor who stares at them through his window but like won't let them inside to like come greet him or anything. There's definitely some freaky scenes in this book but it's very straightforward. There's not a lot of build up to what's happening. The author just jumps right into the story 
literally the third chapter, they moved to a new house and weird things started happening. There was no like, I don't know, slower pacing to increase the tension. Yeah, and I still have like 150-ish pages left. I'm intrigued, but I'm just not really loving it. There's not a whole lot of mystery to it. It's a lot of just telling. It's 11.15, maybe I'll finish it. Two books in two days, that would be crazy. I guess we'll see. One thing I forgot to mention about this book that I'm getting really annoyed with is one, Every other chapter is told from the other spouse's perspective. So one chapter is told from the husband's point of view and the next chapter is told from the wife's point of view. But there's nothing in the headers that reminds you whose perspective you're now reading from, which is really annoying. I don't like when books do that. Even though it's two people, it just gets confusing. And I like that little reminder that, oh yeah, this is now the person's perspective that I'm now reading from. I assume it's intentional, but I just find it really annoying. Another thing is that they're not telling each other anything. Their reactions in this story are not normal. They're not communicating. If one of them sees something at night they don't wake up the other person to say oh my gosh I'm scared which any normal person would do they're just like oh I'll just go back to bed and not wake my husband I don't like when stories rely on the plot of not communicating things to other characters I feel like it's really lazy I don't think that it's realistic that people just don't communicate and tell one another things sure that happens sometimes but it's just kind of a lazy way to move the plot along and I get bored with it really fast okay I have decided to DNF this book. I got 150 pages in and I cannot read another chapter. I am just not loving where this is going. It was starting out to be this like haunted house story, them trying to figure out the history of it and then turned into like their neighbor missing and then they needed to be on the hunt for their neighbor. And it just didn't make sense like why they stayed in that house with every single night something crazy happening, they never like justified in their external or internal monologue as to why they kept deciding to stay there. They just were like, oh, I guess I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> None of their actions made sense. The neighbor thing was weird. And then once it started like veering off into a missing persons kind of story and away from the haunted house I was just like okay I'm done. Also the writing was just really clunky. The two characters seemed like the same person. It was so hard to tell the difference between them. Their internal voices just were the same and yeah I just did not like this at all. I just can't continue on reading this. I'm also bummed that I spent an entire night trying to get through this when I could have been reading something else, but that is what happens, I suppose, when you decide to DNF a book, so sorry, Jack. Done with that. It's 12, 14 a.m. and I need to go to bed. I just spent an entire night reading something that I didn't even finish, so that's fun. Hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit better of a day. Sometimes just a good night's sleep helps with everything, so... I am going to call it a night, I guess. What a day. Good morning. Look at this lion's mane. Currently making some coffee. I'm watching my friend Chandler and her daily vlog, which I'm loving and living for. And yeah, I don't know what to do today as far as books. I have three options left, which is crazy. I have In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I have Uzumaki and The Whisper Man. The Whisper Man I'm waiting for because it's on Scribd, but it's not available to me on Scribd until the 19th, which really stinks. So I think that's on Saturday. So I think The Whisper Man is going to be my weekend read. So my other choices then are In a Dark Dark Wood and Uzumaki. I'm excited to read both. I think I'm gonna go with Uzumaki. And the reason being is because I need a change of pace and it's a manga. So that's good. Also, I hope this doesn't look weird. I'm plunging my coffee. It's a thing. I promise it's a thing. That's the plan today. It's Wednesday, which is wonderful. Halfway through the week. Well, no, I have Friday off, so two more days of work left. I'm very excited about that. It is almost time for me to go back to work after my lunch break, but I wanted to check in because I started reading Uzumaki by Junji Ito, and <laughs> it's so 
weird. It's so weird. This is a manga. It's giant. This is the biggest manga I've ever had and I'm reading it for the prompt to read something a little bit out of your comfort zone. This is like a horror manga. I've never read that genre of manga ever before so it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. I am enjoying it but it's so creepy. So far we're following the story of this girl and her boyfriend. His dad at the beginning of the story gets very obsessed with spirals. They're just everywhere. He sees them, he collects them, he quits his job because he's too busy staring at spirals all day. He ends up like going crazy and pretty much dying because of these spirals. And then his wife starts to see spirals everywhere and go crazy. And it's just like this weird, creepy situation where these spirals are slowly taking over this town. And it's so weird. It's also like kind of, uh, I want to use the word disturbing because some of the artwork like includes the ways that these people are dying and it's not like super gruesome or anything, but it's just weird. It would never happen in real life. It's definitely a wild ride and I just had to talk about it quickly because it's like very strange, very twisted, no pun intended. Here's like some of the artwork just on the inside cover. I also forgot that I need to update my bullet journal, so I need to do that, but I first need to get back to work, finish my day, and then I'll probably check in with you guys a little bit later. So I am about like halfway through this manga and it is the weirdest thing I have ever read. <laughs> really out there, pretty dark, a little gory and gruesome, but I'm kind of enjoying it. It's like these mini stories of things that are happening in this town because of those spirals. When I updated you guys at first, I had only read like one chapter. So the first chapter was about her boyfriend's dad who went crazy because of the spirals, but that hasn't really been revisited. We're still just seeing all of the different things that are happening because of this weird spiral thing in this town. It's bizarre. People turn into slugs. Like, <laughs> it's so weird, but I kind of like it. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone where every episode is different. We're still following that main girl character, but none of the stories really overlap with one another in specific details. It's very weird though. I finished Uzumaki by Junji Ito. It ended up being a lot more cohesive the second half of the book. So the story was a little bit more linear. The seemingly like random stories that were happening in the first half kind of came together in the end a little bit more. I felt like ultimately the ending was a bit of a disappointment, but I did enjoy my time reading this manga. I kind of liked the first half a little bit more than the second half. It started getting a little bit repetitive and I feel like the characters were starting to go on missions that were just sort of filler. I think it was a little bit longer than it needed to be, but honestly it was like really fun. It was definitely an adventure. <laughs> Very weird and bizarre, but entertaining. And I definitely want to read more Junji Ito in the future for sure. This is my third book down. I'm kind of counting the grip of it, kind of not really, but I did spend a good majority of yesterday reading it. I have In a Dark Dark Wood and The Whisper Man left, so that's exciting. And tomorrow's Thursday, so I still have four days left of this readathon. I feel like I could read so much more, especially on audiobooks, but I don't know. I'm kind of just seeing where the wind takes me. A lot of my stuff was available on Scribd a couple weeks ago, and now it's not anymore, which is kind of a bummer. So I might have to like just start picking up other thrillers I'm interested in. Whether or not I had originally planned them for the readathon, I don't know if they'd follow all the prompts necessarily, but I'd kind of like to see if I could find another one that has a spooky setting since the grip of it didn't really work out, but we'll see. I've spent most of my evening reading this book and talking with friends, so it's been a much better night than last night. <laughs> And I'm super grateful for that. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Woo. <laughs>
Thursday. It's Thursday. It's my last day of work. I have off tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. I had really weird dreams last night because of this book. I just, yes, so crazy. Anyway, I need to pick a new book to read, I think. Ugh. So I can still do In a Dark Dark Wood, which I want to do. And then I also have The Butterfly Garden, which I did want to read this month. I've been really encouraged because at first I was like, oh, was this a mistake? This doesn't feel like a book that I would ever typically pick up. But I had a lot of people comment on my TBR video saying that this is a really good one and they liked it. So that's really exciting. And I'm going to check if it's on Scribd. And if it is, I would love to listen to it today. If it's not, then I'll probably start In a Dark Dark Wood because that was on my list but i'm hopeful that it's on script the butterfly garden it is so we're gonna listen to the butterfly garden today all i know is that this is about a serial killer who buries his victims bodies in a butterfly garden i'm intrigued i don't think it's gonna be really like scary necessarily but i'm excited to see what happens i'll keep you guys updated hello <laughs> It's like the first time I'm actually legitimately vlogging today and I have two minutes of memory left on my video card so I need to make this fast but I just stayed up super late it's 1 30 in the morning and I listened to all of the butterfly garden and I finished it and it was so dark and twisted and not anything like I thought it was going to be I want to tell you what it's about but I feel pressed for time. Since I'm running out of time, I'm just going to explain more of it in the morning, but I just wanted to quickly update and say that I did read it and I did mostly like it. Had some issues with the ending, but like 75% of the book was pretty good. It was pretty entertaining. I need to go to bed. I kind of had a rough day yesterday, so I just took a little bit of a break. I still did read though. I listened to the entire audiobook for The Butterfly Garden. This is by Dot Hutchinson and this was so unexpectedly really good. So this book is definitely different than what I thought it would be. It's about a psychopath serial killer guy and his son and how they kidnap girls around the age of 16. They bring them back to his greenhouse type butterfly garden. The father tattoos these like butterfly wings on their backs to basically mark them as his and then keeps them around for his own good times, but then embalms them and preserves their bodies in risen. Keeps them behind this like glass paneling to be on like display. It's so messed up. It's so messed up. But the point of view is told from a survivor. We jump into the story where the FBI is actually talking to one of the victims that this happened to and a lot of them did end up escaping and we find out slowly like her story, how she was kidnapped, what happened during her time there, and then how they even ended up escaping. Oh my goodness, I was not expecting to like this as much as I did. It is really dark. While obviously it was a very horrific situation, the scenes weren't graphic and I really appreciated that. This one tells you just enough for you to kind of fill in the blanks, which as a reader, I really appreciated. I thought the audiobook was done really well too. There were two different narrators, one from the FBI agent's perspective and then one from the girl's perspective. I loved the dual timeline. I really appreciate when you're in one setting in the present and then someone's telling a story from the past. I loved that. It wasn't as like thrilling because you know in the beginning that they escaped. Even though she's telling the story of what happened, there's definitely this sense of like relief because you know that they're safe from the beginning. I will say I didn't love the ending. And for that reason, I did end up only giving it four stars. It would have been a five star book, but the end was so rushed and it had a twist that the author threw in there that felt so forced. It wasn't necessary. Like the book by itself was really good and entertaining and I loved the story, but I thought that the twist at the end was completely unnecessary and just didn't need to happen. Like it would have been fine without it. And unfortunately it kind of made me like the book less 
because of the ending. There's also really good friendship tropes. I wanted to mention that really quick. The group of girls that are kidnapped are really like close knit and a family. And it's just a very interesting dynamic to read about, especially in such an intense situation. This is like a nine hour audiobook. It was on script and I flew through it. I really enjoyed it a lot. With that being said, I do need to pick up today In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I need to stop putting this off. I need to just read it. I'm kind of just nervous that I'm not gonna like it. I don't know why. I just hear so many mixed reviews on Ruth Ware books, but the two books that I have read from her have been some of my favorite books. I know this is like an older one by her. It only has blurbs on the back. All I know is that there's something about someone pulling a gun at a bachelorette party, which doesn't tell me anything about the story. It is one o'clock. I have the day off. It's Friday. So I thought it would be the perfect day to do some shopping. I do want to go to Target. I want to go to Hobby Lobby and I really would like to go to World Market. I've never been there but I've heard good things and I think I have one sort of near my house. So I'll take you guys with me and we'll go do some fun fall decor shopping. So home decor shopping did not go as planned. I went to Target and I did not see anything I liked. Also, there's no world market by me whatsoever. I don't know what I was thinking, but we definitely don't have a world market here. After Target disappointed me, I didn't feel like going to Hobby Lobby and spending money. So that was kind of a bust. <laughs> I did get a couple of things, but they're not like amazing. I did get, which I'm excited about, but again, not amazing. I got a heated blanket, which I'm excited for. I love blankets and like pillows and just all the cozy things. I also got this single fake peony. I got a really cool gold bowl. This is from the like Chrissy Teigen collection. It's like metal. It's so heavy and hard and durable and I'm obsessed with it. I got bubbly because it's the superior sparkling water. I also got this super cute hat. I really need a winter coat, but I got a hat instead of a coat. This is the longest my hair has ever been and I think it's gonna look really cute. At least I hope so. Who? <sighs> Maybe? I always second guess me in hats, but I think it's kind of cute. It's like velvety. Do I look weird? <laughs> I feel like I might look weird. You guys let me know if I can pull this off, please help me. So yeah, that's kind of been my day. I also did a little jean and bra shopping, but I'm just not gonna show you guys that stuff. Good news is though that I found a pair of jeans that I like and that look good and that are comfortable. So I'm very happy with that. It is 6.45. I know that that's hard to believe. What am I gonna do with the rest of my night? I need to stop procrastinating in a dark, dark wood. The thing is, I'm not gonna lie, all I wanna do is listen to audiobooks right now. Like I don't wanna physically read a book and I don't have that one available in audiobook and it's sort of bumming me out. Do I actually read it physically or do I try and get the audiobook somewhere? Stay tuned. <laughs> Game changer! It's happening.
It's like one in the morning. I'm really tired. I didn't finish in a dark, dark wood, but I only have like five hours left. So I got a good portion of the way through. I'm not loving it yet. With her other two books, they were just so intriguing right from the beginning. This book is just very, I don't want to say like amateur, but it's just not as good as like the other books that I've read from her. So it follows the story of this girl who got invited to an old friend. They haven't talked in 10 years and she got invited to her bachelorette party in this really remote area with these other people that she's never met. We start to find out that there's like some history between them, like kind of some rocky history. The girl that's getting married is marrying an ex-boyfriend of hers so there's like some some tension some drama creepiness because they're kind of in the middle of nowhere and then we also have a dual timeline where it's like flipping forward and she's in a hospital and you're trying to figure out like how she got there why she got there something about a shotgun in the house that they're staying at there's like a murder but she doesn't know what happened so we're kind of like going back and forth and it's fine it's just like not the most intriguing story as far as like thrillers go it's fine <laughs> i'm not hating it which is a good thing so i am gonna finish that tomorrow as well as pick up whisper man i am buddy reading that with kaylin and Liv and chandler joined in which is awesome so we're all like reading that this month and I'm really excited to hear what they have to say about it and what I think. I hope it's good. And uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. I'm just chilling and watching TV. I spent some time like doing my nails, which ended up looking kind of cool. I'm not usually one to do multiple colors or like crazy designs or anything like that. But I really kind of like the ombre effect. It's very Halloween-y. It's like glitter black and red. And I'm... A fan. I'm gonna hit the hay and I will check in tomorrow. It's the time to unlearn all those barriers that all fall down now. There's nothing in the way when Take it slow, a knowing smile starts to grow. Our moons have moved the seas, I have no fear left, I'm fearless.
I have done a lot so far today. It's already 4.49, so it's almost 5 o'clock. I spent the morning listening to the rest of In a Dark Dark Wood, and I'll get there in a second. I also cleaned my bedroom, made some breakfast, hung out with my cats, FaceTimed my husband. It was a good morning. And then I went to our local park area. They've got like a tennis court and baseball fields and playground for kids. I just discovered this place like last week, so I'm obsessed with it. But I went for my first run that I have gone on since pneumonia and influenza. The double whammy that like was slightly traumatizing. <laughs> and then after I went running, I ran to the pet store <laughs> and bought some stuff for my cat. I just can't help it. I love buying them toys and stuff. They're so cute. <laughs> so I finished in a dark, dark wood. And so far, like I said, I have read three Ruth Ware books. That one is my least favorite. <laughs> it wasn't that it was bad by any means. It was just fine. Like there was nothing really scary about the story. I've been thinking about it ever since I finished it this morning. And I can't pinpoint what it is, but it, it was kind of a bland story. It still was an interesting mystery. So I'll give it that. I was still very like into the mystery of who done it. You know what I mean? But as far as characters, setting, plot, I just didn't care really. Like I wasn't invested like I've been in her other stories. So solid three star, maybe two and a half. Out of all the thrillers that I've read this week, other than the grip of it, that doesn't count. It's been my least favorite. I think ultimately it's a really forgettable story. I've been sitting up in my room coloring and listening to The Whisper Man and pretty much hating life. It's the most boring book I have read in a long time. I think I'm going to DNF it. <laughs> Chandler and I have been reading it together tonight and she's also not loving it. So I'm glad it's not just me that's just not getting... Like, I'm not clicking with the characters. I'm not invested in the story. It's very much... I feel like my camera's not doing a very good job right now. Okay, I had to move over here because the lighting was so bad. I think it wasn't even focusing on my face. But like I was saying, it was not what I was expecting. So I thought that the book was going to be about this serial killer who lured his victims out of their house by like whispering. And so they called him the Whisper Man. Well, it's kind of about that. But that guy has already been caught and he's already been put into prison. And what's happening is that Another little boy in the town just disappeared mysteriously in circumstances similar. But then you also have another story happening from a father's point of view. He's caring for his son who's like in kindergarten or first grade. Earlier on in the book, the son almost gets lured out of his house by this person. And now the two stories are starting to kind of like come together. But it's just so boring. It, this is like 100% mystery and like 0% thriller. Like it's just not what I want. I'm over 50% of the way through. I only have like two hours left of the audiobook if I listen on two times speed. But I just have zero desire. Chandler just texted me and said she's DNFing too. So there's that. Also the audiobook's Thanks. It's not good. It's 10 o'clock and I'm trying to debate if I want to try and pick up a different book or should I just like turn on the TV and chill for the night? I don't know what to do. Let me consult Twitter. Okay, I asked Twitter what I should do for the rest of my night and I'm very scared because what I want to do is just chill and watch TV and cuddle up in bed. What I think people are gonna say is that I should start a new book because those were the options I put. Oh, I got one vote and it was for Chill and Watch TV, whoever you are. You are my friend. What are you doing? You stole my spot. Okay, it's time to check Twitter. Let's see what my fate is. <laughs> Chill and watch TV. You guys love me. 63% <laughs> chill and watch TV. I am happy about that decision. I think I'm just going to call it a night. It's kind of been a long day. A long day of reading two mediocre books, which not great. But such is life when you're trying to read a zillion books in a week. You're bound to get some duds. Tomorrow is the last day of Spookathon which is crazy. I think I'm going to pick up another book, probably an audiobook, and hopefully end this week on a good note. <laughs> Feel being alone Any regret
regrets since I've been gone. You messed up and dressed up all your lies. Thank you for making me realize. Cause I'm too high. Don't drag me down. No waste my time. So I ended up starting no exit by taylor adams and i'm really enjoying it so far i'm listening to the audiobook of course and it's following the story of our main character darby who is a college student she just found out that her mom has cancer so she decided last minute late at night to drive to see her mom she gets stuck in a snowstorm though and ends up at this like rest stop area with a bunch of strangers and they're all stranded she ends up finding out that one of the cars that's parked contains a little girl that's locked in a cage. And so she's now basically racing against time to stop this crazy psychopath and save the girl. And it's just so good and entertaining and heart pumping and everything I wanted in a thriller. I realized this morning that I picked up The Whisper Man for the read a thriller prompt and it literally was not a thriller at all. So I went ahead with the most thriller book I could think of that I already had and picked this one and I'm so glad that I did. I'm loving it. I saw you call my phone, but there's no one at the tone. You messed up and dressed up all your lies. I made the decision to say goodbye, cause I'm too high. Don't drag me down, don't waste my time. yourself to blame don't want to hear what you got to say what you got to say don't drag me down don't waste my time don't need you around and i don't need to worry about who we're gonna be better off without you Took some time to see You were always threatened By the things that I achieved And I don't need to bother With her insecurities Cause I'm too high Don't drag me down So I spent all this time Tracing out this pattern To carve on this pumpkin And it was gonna be like this Harry Potter-esque Hogwarts castle looking with the moon thing and I ended up destroying it <laughs> at the last second. Oh, I'm so annoyed. So that didn't turn out <laughs> very well. Here was my attempt and as you can see it, it looks terrible. So <laughs> I went ahead and just made a little face and he looks kind of cute at least. I'm just annoyed that I spent all that time I accidentally like pushed too hard on one of the things and it just caved in the rest of the design. Carving is not one of my talents. It's 8.30. I have about two and a half hours left of no exit and I am stoked. Honestly, the whole time I was carving the pumpkin and watching Halloween Town, I just wanted to keep reading the book. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna go do now. I'm gonna go back upstairs color some more, you know the drill, finish the book, and then once I'm done with this book, it'll finally be the end of the readathon. So, I'm ready, let's do this. It's 11.45 p.m. and I just finished <laughs> No Exit. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that I finished this just in the nick of time. This was so good. This is 100% pure adrenaline, thriller, action, crazy, oh my gosh, what is happening kind of book. I think that they're making this into a movie, which I am very excited for because I will absolutely 
be seeing this if that's true. There's not a whole lot for me to say about this. It's not like the most eloquent, amazing piece of literature. It's just so entertaining. Wow, there were some times where I literally out loud would be like, no way, or oh my gosh. And it takes a lot for a book for me to like audibly express how I'm feeling. The ending was pretty nuts. I was just on the edge of my seat the whole time. Every time I thought things were gonna be okay or I thought something was gonna go one way, it just surprised me. This was so intense. It was a little bit gory towards the end, so I will say that if you are someone who doesn't really like violence or get queasy, all that stuff. Yeah, overall, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And that's it, that's the end of the readathon. I did it. Technically, I read seven books in seven days but I completed five books one for each of the challenges so really quickly read a thriller was no exit a book with red on the cover was an anonymous girl spooky setting was the butterfly garden a book with a scary word in the title was in a dark dark wood so those are all five of the books and then I ended up not finishing but reading over half of the grip of it as well as the whisper man and i just couldn't make it through decided to dnf those so overall this was a really busy week of reading but one that i really enjoyed and i'm proud of myself i love trying to do a book for each challenge during readathons and I think I crushed it and I really enjoyed most of what I read. If you have made it this far in watching, thank you so much. I'm sure this vlog is not short. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you participated in Spookathon. If you have a vlog up, I would love to watch it. Let me know what your favorite book was that you read during Spookathon. I really, really love to hear what you guys are reading and what you enjoyed. So tell me in the comments. All right, y'all, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye!